Chapter 15, Zhou Yinzi. Calm down. Calm down. Zhang Swinning forced herself not to think too much for the time being, this kind of thing is still the first look, it is just the germ and beginning of everything. When a man looks at a woman he likes, his eyes are easy to distinguish. Because outside of love, there is always more or less desire. But a woman looks at a woman she likes, not mixed with desires, and the relationship is essentially not much different from looking at a very close and particularly favorite friend. She should be too deep in the shadow left by the previous life, and there are some cup bows and snake shadows. After her mind turned, Zhang Swinning became much calmer. She was surging in her heart, but she couldn't see it on her face. Although Shen Zai I stood very close to her, she didn't know how many strange and absurd thoughts she had bypassed in her heart, so she only asked the palace people around her to take a look at a palm-sized rhombic glass, and when she saw the petal of falling cherry blossoms, her eyes flickered, and she was already a little moved. When she saw Zhang Swinning for the first time just now, she was really surprised by her appearance, thinking that Yan Lin liked her just because of such a good color, but it was only a matter of three or two sentences, but this Zhang second girl made her see a completely different side of her from ordinary Miss Boudoir. Which lady in Beijing can say that? She has been playing with Yan Lin since she was a child, and then she thinks about it, he has never been a person who is obsessed with lust, and it should indeed be that this second girl Zhang has something that is very worthy of people's liking, so he likes it. Shen Zai took two steps closer, and actually laughed and took Zhang Swinning's hand, you speak very likable, no wonder Yan Lin likes you, even I can't help but like you. She didn't say that it was okay, but when she said it, Zhang Swinning almost knelt down with weak legs. Forcibly holding the string in her head that was about to break, and resisting the urge to withdraw her hand from Shen Zai's hand, she completely restrained her previous free color, made a sincere and fearful appearance, and said, The courtiers are open-mouthed, and they are used to talking nonsense, so please don't blame the princess. Shen Zai saw her suddenly like this, shrunk back, and had no idea how she had pulled her to pick up the pen and described the look and elegance on her face, she frowned unconsciously, and was about to say something. At this time, a voice interjected from the side, saying, Your Highness has scared her. Shen Zai I turned her head to look. The person who spoke was a woman dressed up, who had been standing next to Shen Zai I before, and her style was only weaker than Shen Zai I. The clothes are all made of fine shoe brocade, and the pearl inlaid on the forehead worn on her head is worth a lot, not to mention the bracelet of mutton fat and white jade on her wrist, which has almost no variegation. Distant mountain eyebrows, Danfin eyes. The green silk is like a waterfall, and the cheeks are like snow. Although it is not Zhang Swinning's jealous appearance at the first glance, it can definitely be regarded as bright and beautiful in this flower hall, not to mention that there is a natural noble air between her eyebrows, and although there is a smile on her lips, it gives people a sense of not being angry and arrogant. At first glance, he is a powerful person. This is Xiao Xu, the eldest lady of the Qinquo mansion, and Zhang Swinning also recognizes it. Or to put it more clearly, in the previous life, the eldest lady of the Xiao family of the Qinquo mansion who was almost slaughtered by Xie Wei. She had only watched from the sidelines for a while, and only then did she come out to speak. It's just that Shen Zai I was a little dissatisfied after hearing this. Xiao Shu laughed, spread the incense fan in her hand, looked at Zhang Swinning, but leaned over to Shen Zai I's ear, lowered her voice and said a few words. After Shen Zai I heard this, a pair of eyes crossed a little bright, and the scar under the left eye, which was not good looking, was also dotted into the shape of falling cherry blossoms. She smiled and clapped her hands, you have a good idea. Then he said to Zhang Swinning, there are many inconvenient people today, 
I'll find you to play another day. Zhang Swinning didn't hear what Xiao Xu said to her, but a little uneasiness rose in her heart, you must know that she and Xiao Xu were not very opposed in her last life, and the two were basically the same age. She married Shen Zhu when Shen Zhu was still the king of Linzi, and Shen Zhu was named the queen after ascending the throne, Xiao Xu entered the palace later, relying on the honor of her mother's Qinquo mansion, and Shen Zhu was a cousin, and soon became the imperial concubine, and let her assist in the six palaces. Although because she was born in the Xiao family, she ended up badly. But right now, Xiao Xu's existence still makes Zhang Xuanning can't help but feel a little jealous. She said yes to Shen Xiai, but she only bowed lightly to Xiao Xu. Don't have anything to do with Sha. In the future, Xia Wei will kill people without blinking. Xiao Xu grew up in a high gate like Qiuagong Mansion since she was a child, and what she saw and learned was far from being comparable to looking for a girl, and from Zhang Xuanning's small move, she easily felt the other party's indifference to her. That's kind of interesting. Xiao Xu didn't show anything, only glanced at Zhang Xuanning meaningfully, and then pulled Shen Xiai away. Because the banquet here in Qing Yuan Bafu has come to an end, and they happened to meet this eldest lady of the Qiuagong mansion and the eldest princess of the dynasty, Yu Shuang, and Yu Yu's sisters knew how to seize the opportunity, and even invited the two to judge, pointing out the leaders who wrote poems and paintings at today's chrysanthemum banquet. Xiao Xu's poems and paintings are good, so I saw them one by one. Finally, after a discussion with Shen Xiai, Shen Xiai pointed to Yu Yu's thin chrysanthemum as the first in the painting, and Chong Yang Thoughts by Miss Fan Jia, the head of the Hanlin Academy, as the first in the poem. The Miss Fan family's poems and books are heirlooms, which is considered stable. Yu Yu has been practicing her painting skills for many years and has finally paid off, and she is still handpicked by the eldest princess of Liang, and she is so happy that she almost sheds tears. Zhang Swinning neither knew how to draw nor write, and watched coldly from beginning to end, seeing that it was all over, and when Shen Xiai and Xiao Xu left, they were the first to say goodbye and leave. Asterisk. When helping her into the carriage, Tang Er cautiously asked, Do you want to go to the upper floor? Zhang Swinning looked at the sky and counted the hours, at the end of the flower hall just now. The water pavilion was still lively, and Yan Lin should not be able to come out for a while. So his eyes flickered, and he remembered another thing that was still dragging on. She said, let's go to Shijiahutong first. Zhou Yunzi lives in Shijiahutong. This alley is really not close to the Forbidden City, so many ministers who need to go to court or often enter the palace will not choose to build their mansions here so most of the people living in this alley are low-grade officials. Zhou Yunzi started late, and the money had to be used to dredge up and down and make connections, so naturally he had no extra financial resources to buy a mansion. Therefore, when Zhang Swinning arrived at the alley of Dexi Street, she saw two small black lacquer doors in the depths, buckled with a copper knocker that had been old for a long time, and the words Hufa was hung on it. It's a bit shabby. She asked Tang Er to knock on the door. After a while, a female voice came from inside, it's here. Soon you can hear the sound of the dead bolt at the back. Immediately after a squeak, the door opened, and a delicate face poked out from inside, first saw Tang Er, and then saw Zhang Swinning behind Tang Er, only to feel that although the dress was not gorgeous, it didn't look like a simple identity and he hesitated for a while, who are you? Zhang Swinning didn't answer, but asked, isn't Master Zhou at home? The beautiful woman said, today, my lord went to the guard early in the morning, and I don't know when I will come back. If the girl is in a hurry, she may wish to sit in the hospital first, and the slave will ask someone to pass it on for you. It's just that the adults can't go back, and the slaves really don't know. Zhang Swinning didn't expect that she would have to wait. 
But now that it's all here, what's the point of running for nothing? She pondered for a moment, then nodded. The woman opened the door and took two steps out of the way, invited her and her maid to come in, and then walked to the small courtyard, called the little boy who was brushing horses in the courtyard, and said, Nanzo, go to the guard to find the adult, and say that the family has a visitor, and there is something urgent to find him. The boy named Nanzo put down the broom and was about to go out. Zhang Swinning wrinkled her eyebrows and thought about it, then suddenly stopped him and said, No need, just tell your family that the love horse he raised is sick and dying, and ask him to come back and take a look. Nanso couldn't help but look at the woman in confusion. The woman didn't know Zhang Swinning's identity, but she didn't look like she was here to seek revenge, and she was afraid that she would mislead the adult, so although she hesitated, she finally nodded and said, Just report it like this. Nanso just went. The courtyard is not large, and there are only four or five rooms in total, and the guests are in the middle hall. The woman called herself Mi Niang, a maid bought by Zhou Yunzi. She invited Zhang Swinning to sit down, and made tea to serve. Su is first time to see such a glorious character, a little at a loss and ashamed of himself, only said, it's this year's new tea, but it's not very good, I hope you hi Han. Zhang Swinning had heard of such a person as a young lady in her last life is one of the few concubines around Zhou Yunzi who can be favored for many years. Some people also say that it is his favorite. It turned out that he followed so early, even if he met at a small time, it is no wonder that in the future, even if there are a group of beautiful concubines, they have never treated such a mediocre concubine room lightly. Zhang Swinning said, It's okay, I'll just sit for a while. If your family doesn't come back for a long time, I'll leave soon. She picked up the tea and took a sip. Frozen top oolong, but it is indeed jerky and a little bitter in the mouth. She had been raised in the palace for many years, and her appetite was very demanding, so she didn't force herself at this moment, and just took a sip and put down the tea. After waiting for about two quarters and three quarters, the sound of hurried footsteps came from the alley. The mother hurriedly went up to open the door. Zhou Yunzi came in wearing a black brocade robe with dark embroidered cloud patterns. This courtyard was small and unobstructed, and as soon as he looked up at the gate of the courtyard, he saw Zhang Swinning sitting in the hall, and his eyes suddenly flashed. He walked into the house. The young lady followed him. But he turned back and said, go down. The mother was slightly stunned for a while, glanced at Zhang Swinning, and didn't dare to say anything, but said, that adult has something to call a slave. Zhou Yunzi walked in at this time, but he was not ambiguous, and bowed to Zhang Swinning, last time, the second girl was invited, and Zhou had something to do temporarily, so he said goodbye without saying goodbye, which was rude. Today, she was so tired that the girl came in person, hoping that the girl would forgive her sins. This man was born quite tall, and when he stood in the hall, he felt that this house was short. Zhang Swinning raised her eyes to look at him, and only said, You have to come back quickly. There happened to be nothing going on in the guard, and Ben was ready to come back. In fact, on the contrary, there are endless things to do in the guard house. When Nanzo came to him, he was listening to the quarrel between Zhou Qinhu and the criminal department about the matter, and when he heard Nanzo say that his horse was not good, he knew that it was wrong at the first thought in his heart. When he arrived at the guard in the morning, he had just fed the horses himself, and there was nothing wrong with him. So I knew that there was something else. He immediately complained about it, and said to the chief in the guard house, and then hurried back. When I asked Nanzo on the way, it was Zhang Swinning who came to find it. Zhou Yunzi came up in vain, with ambitions, facing Zhang Swinning, a weak woman, and there was no arrogance in his expression, but he lowered his posture, 
but maybe the girl has to wait for two days, that is, if you don't come to Zhou, Zhou will also come to you. Zhang Swinning guessed, but pretended to be surprised, oh. Zhou Yinzi said, recently, when Zhou Qinhu on Jin Yiwei's side took the thief, he didn't ask the criminal department to get approval, so he was impeached by Zhang Sha in the matter, and claimed that he should be severely punished according to the law. Although Zhou Qinhu has some connections in the court, things are not easy to settle, and I don't know how to cover it, but at least Zhou Qinhu's position is difficult to protect. This will leave a vacancy of 1,000 households. But Zhou was soft-spoken, had no money to dredge, and no one had connections to live, so he planned to be cheeky and ask the second girl for help. It turned out that the lack he was trying to seek and going around and around had something to do with Zhang Xia. She didn't know much about Zhang Xia's early years, and she didn't know how he spent this time. Zhang Swinning narrowed her eyes. When she came here, she originally had a complete plan, but she didn't expect Zhou Yinzi to be so straightforward, so she opened her mouth first. But it's okay that she doesn't have to bother with any more words. Thinking about it, she said, do you want to ask me to introduce you to Yan Lin? Zhou Yinzi sat down at the bottom of her, and a pair of eagle falcons looked like sharp eyes, an array of light crossed them, and he only said, the Yanji Marquis mansion is comparable to the Xiao family, and it is quite able to speak in the court. And the girl is good friends with the son, and the son is about to be crowned. If I can get the blue eyes of the world, I will be able to work for the girl in the future. This clearly means that she will marry into the Yanji Marquis mansion in the future. In the previous life, Zhou Yinzi made such a request because she first asked someone to check Shen Zhu's identity, and she really thought that Zhou Yinzi could use it for herself, so she helped her. But in this life, she already knew Shen Zhu's identity, so she naturally had nothing to ask for. Merely. Zhang Swinning looked at him and smiled slowly, Father is a household servant, although he is not in charge of the ministry, but he is also among the six departments, if you just want to seek the lack of a thousand households, you only go to ask your father, but you want to vote for Yan Shiza from me. I'm wondering, why? Zhou Yinzi listened to her words, and suddenly had an indescribable feeling in his heart. When did the second girl become so clear about the affairs of the court? It must be known that she was just a pampered temperament in the past, and she followed Yan Shiza to make trouble all day long. He looked at Zhang Swinning and didn't answer for a while. Zhang Swinning said, If you want me to introduce you to Yan Lin, it's not impossible. But I have a question that I'd like to ask you first. That's why I'm here this time. Zhou Yinzi remained silent, girl, excuse me. Zhang Swinning said, Zhou Qinhu's disposal has not come down yet, but you are already anxious to ask me to introduce Yan Lin for you, in addition to wanting to find a position for a thousand households, I am afraid that there is also Jin Yiwei over there to investigate the old case of King Pingnan, I want you to sneak to the Yanji Marquis Mansion and find out, right? Crunch. With a sharp and piercing sound, it was Zhou Yinzi's hair standing on end, and when he suddenly got up, he brought it to the chair under the seat, and made the chair legs scratch the ground and pull out a short sound. His pupils constricted, staring at Zhang Swinning. I couldn't believe it in my eyes. You must know that he only heard the news about this matter two days ago, and today the commander of the guard just called him in to give some orders which was a secret among the secrets, and he didn't even tell anyone. But now it was broken by Zhang Swinning. How did she know? Zhang Swinning saw Zhou Yinzi's strong reaction, how could she not know that she had guessed correctly? At this time, sorrow came up. No wonder Zhou Yin ended up miserable in the previous life. The Marquis of Yanji's mansion was implicated in the case of King Pingnan's rebellion, and his family was exiled, which really had nothing to do with him. 
It is no wonder that Xiehui later wanted to make him suffer 10,000 arrows and die, and cut off his head and hang it at the palace gate. And this poisonous snake was actually what she introduced to Yan Lin back then. Zhang Xuning closed her eyes slightly and said, Zhou Yinzi, if you want to live, I'll teach you a good one. The stakes in this case are so important that one MO is too deeply involved in it. If you do it, you may be on the rise and prominent for a while, but if you wait a little longer, I am afraid that your head will be in a different place, and there will be no place to bury you. Asterisk. After the showdown between Zhang Xuning and Zhou Yinzi, she talked to him for a while before leaving. It was not early, and she was afraid that Yan Lin would wait for a long time on the floor. After she left, Zhou Yinzi sat in the hall, his face gloomy, but he didn't move for a long time. Until the young lady came in to look for her, she was frightened by his complexion, My lord, you, what's wrong with you? Zhou Yinzi did not answer. He turned his gaze to look at the small courtyard. In one corner of the courtyard is the stable, where a high-quality jujub horse is burying its head in the forage. This is a horse that Zhou Yin bought for himself when he just bought a hundred households in Jinyi two years ago, and he must feed it himself every day, and then take it to the suburbs of Beijing for a run. He looked at it for a moment, then got up and walked over, and touched the horse's beautiful smooth mane. The horse knew his master and rubbed his palm affectionately. But the young lady standing under the eaves clearly saw that Zhou Yinzi's other hand had already pulled out the knife at his waist, and he screamed in surprise for a while. Poof! There was a muffled thud as the sharp tip of the knife pierced the horse's neck. The horse immediately raised its front hooves and kicked down the stable, but Zhou Yin's death held down the horse's head and a large amount of blood spurted out, splashing Zhou Yinzi's body. However, the knife was so fierce and accurate that it didn't struggle for a moment before it fell. Zhou Yinzi was a little out of strength at this time, half kneeling in the terrifying pool of blood, holding the blood-stained knife in one hand, and gently resting on the horse's head with the other, watching it swallow his breath, and then said slowly, Remember, no one has come to look for me today, it's my horse that is sick.